when many people are trying to do the metal covers on their outer covers they try to cut the corners and if they actually snip a corner like this right here what's going to happen is you're still going to get water runoff into the wood and if you take a look here the wood is going to start bowing and separating it's always best if you can to do the corners such as this they're folded and there's no way for the water to run into the wood it's going to go into this corner this groove and then run out here's another example of the corner folded to protect the wood underneath from the from the weather so what we're going to do is take a look at how to make these corners how to cut the the sheet metal in the right size make the corners so that they fold over and in to protect the wood underneath. So let's go into the workshop and start doing some cutting and folding. All right, we're gonna talk about how to make the folded corners on a metal outer cover. So th this is what the finished product will look like. And, uh, but to start off with, to start off with, we need to have our wooden portion of the outer cover done. And for the dimensions that I use on a standard Langstroth uh, hive is, I'm going to go 22 inches using three quarter inch, three quarter inch, uh, uh, well, one by wood, which the finish is three quarter inch. So it's going to be 22 inches long and and 18 and a half inches wide now if you'll notice on on the wooden joints i do have a rabbit in here so with that that makes this 22 inch side to actually be uh 21 and a quarter inches long so this would be 21 an inch 21 and a quarter inches long. This would be 18 and a half inches with the miter uh, dado cut in the 18 and a half inch piece. We will then take our piece of sheet metal, which is just uh, roofing soffit material that comes in a 24 inch roll. We'll just unroll that out and cut it. All right, we generally will start off with a 24 inch, 24 inch wide roll and then cut it off to the, the length that we want. And since our dimensions of the wooden part is 18 and a half, 18 and a half by 22, when we cut it, we want to have about an inch overlap on all four sides. So what that allows us to do is take that 24 inch wide piece of, of metal and then cut it to a length of 20 and a half inches. That way it gives us a one inch gap on both sides, on all four sides. The best way of doing that is just taking a square of some sort. Uh, I'm able to use this uh, drywall uh, T-square, it works really well. Hold that up there, measure the one inch, come down through here and just put a mark on there. So on the opposite side we will measure off one inch and then take our marker and mark one inch and do that on all four sides and So at that point, we've got everything measured the way we want. And to do the rest, the actual bending part, you're going to need a 
hand seamer. This right here is a is a six inch hand seamer. Uh, you can pick up the f uh, four inch hand seamer at, at uh, like places like Lowe's or Home Depot or probably some other hardware places. Um, whether you use a six inch or a four inch, it doesn't really matter. They both function the same, and I'll show you how they work. Um, what we're going to do next is use a what I have made is a uh, a handmade break or a, a metal bending device and what I've done is I've taken a a, a piece of uh, this right here was a piece of just number two pine the problem with using pine is it has a tendency to crack and there's a crack here so I've got to be very careful when I actually bend this so that I don't crack this any further um, some oak or or poplar would probably work just as well. So we're going to put this in here. Oh, the way I made it was I took a, a thin kerf uh, blade and I and I measured uh, seven eighths of an inch deep to to do a my one inch bend because once you add the radius of the bend, then uh, you're going to be right at your at your one inch. So I just insert that in there, hold it in place and just push down and up at the same time and then I get my um, my 90 degree bend here I'll do this on the other side as well and then I just bend that like that. And so, so now we have a bend on this side and this side. Now before we bend the, the narrower end, we need to at this point use our hand seamer because what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a bend along this diagonal to this outside corner here. And you really don't have to use a pen to mark this because after you've done it a while, you, you know where your, where your marks are going to be. So I'll set that down, grab the hand seamer, and what we're going to do is going to line this up and then we're going to we're going to push up on this direction here and at the same time push up on this direction here we will make a crease along that, along that diagonal and at that point you can see the the uh, crease that it has made okay and so at that point we'll go ahead and do the opposite corner here and now that I've got this bend right here started then at that point I can take my hand seamer and do my one inch bend here. Now I don't want to bend the entire 90 degrees at this point. I just want to go maybe 30 degrees of it at that point. Because if you try to do all of it at one time, what's going to happen is you wind up with some creases in there. Of course, I know it's just it's just a bee box. It's not fine furniture, so it's not critical. That, it, that you have no abnormal creases in there. But now, if you take a look, we now have a partially developed corner here. And what we're gonna do now is, is take the seamer and crunch in. See, I, can you see what I'm doing on the camera like that? I'm gonna crunch in on it like that and 
then just squeeze it and flatten it out and see this is what we've got at, at this point here. Okay, we'll do the, do the same thing to the other corner. In fact, I'm going to bend that up just a little bit closer to 90. And, and then at that point, I'm going to just squeeze it and straighten it out. At that point, I'm going to straighten it out to be the same as either with this edge or straighten it to this edge. It really doesn't matter because then what I'm going to do is fold this corner over. Can you see that? And take this corner and fold it over. Then I'll take the seamer and, and just kind of square up the edges. So now the next step you want to do is you want to take your original wooden portion and just do a dry fit in here to see how it's going to fit in here. And it looks as though I've got a little bit of slack in here and that's just because I did not bend that exactly right. I may correct that. But then at that point, we'll push this in as far this way against this edge I oh, can't see it against this edge the best we can and then remark where we want this bend to be uh, just because the 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 angle of that metal or angle of that bend is going to affect how much space is so you can see that it's, it's probably uh, I don't know if you can see that see that line or not but it's about uh, about an eighth of an inch difference so now that we have that all set we will start the bend here but not much probably 10 to 20 degrees at, at this point we just want to barely get started because we want to come back to this corner here and do from the inside of the corner to the outside of the corner and do our folding bend here. And notice, notice again how this angle is. is I've got this part bent up this part bent up and then I've creased the inside of this corner here which is going to allow us to fold it over. So I'm going to go and do the opposite corner like that and then I'll come along with the seamer and go down along my newly marked line Once I get the hand seamer close to that corner, you'll see that it will shape up closer to what we want. And once again, we get it at this point, and we will just squeeze that down like that. We'll bend this side up just a little bit more. Just kind of a you want to go a little a little bend at a time is generally better. Now I'm going to just straighten this up to closer to 90 degrees. Bend this dead on all of the sides here. We'll just bend this, this triangle part here over like that. Bend this one over. And then I'll take the hand seamer and just square up the corners. 
And now comes the big test. How is this going to fit? Let's take a look. There you go. And now you have a finished product that will protect the wooden part from any water because if you, if you notice there's not any bends, cracks, or cuts that would allow water to get in to the inside. The wooden portion really needs to be painted and in fact I like to paint all of it. The, the outside, the outside edge, of course the the edges here and even on the inside. I like to just paint it all. If I had a wax dipping uh, operation I would uh, what well, I would certainly wax dip this and then uh, and then it would last for years and years I don't have that so I just paint it I uh, use a good quality exterior semi-gloss paint I paint everything and then once it's painted and dried then I can slip our metal cover on, put a couple of staples on the edges, and you're good to go. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. I hope now you'll be able to easily see how to make how to make a good solid outer cover, metal outer cover. Hopefully that will help you in the bee yard. Another thing is, is you want to make sure that you use a higher quality of of metal, a, a good gauge of metal because if you use something thin when you make these corners, these bends, it will, it will crack. Anyway, thanks for watching.